Welcome back to another chess game analysis video. In the last video, we have taken a look at a very technical and theoretical endgame position. This video is quite different because it's a very tactical opening battle. And it was played, the game I'm going to show you, between Rheinisch and Trexler in 1890. For the first time, the Trexler counterattack was introduced in this game. And it features very nice variation, and the game is not too long. So let's start with e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6. And Rheinisch here with the white pieces goes into the Italian game with bishop c4. With knight f6, the two knights defense against the Italian and knight g5, immediately going for the undefended f7 pawn. The normal move here on top level gameplay on Grandmaster uh, level is d5 here, cutting the bishop's um, view to the f7, f7 pawn. But here we have the Trexler counter gambit or Trexler counter attack with bishop c5. It is not objectively very sound, but it's very dangerous if white doesn't play correctly. And there is a lot of theory that goes into it. And Rheinisch in this game already makes the, the first inaccuracy in this position. Bishop f7 check, king e7 would have been better and the engine already gives plus 1.5. So white is better in this position. But here going for the fork is very dangerous. And that's what Rheinisch played in the game. Because now there is already a first sacrifice on the fifth on the fifth move. Bishop takes f2 check. And we're gonna take a look at King F1 in another video because I'm gonna cover the tracks look quite extensively because it is a very nice opening, features a very nice couple of variations in the opening. We're also gonna take a look at a variation that arises after King takes f2 and knight e4 check in another video. So Rheinisch in this position, seeing this for the first time, remember, no engines or databases were really a thing back in, in 1890. So he had to rely on his chess intuition and he realized that he should probably not take the bishop. But King F1 would be better. King E2 is what he played in the game. And this is already the first mistake. And it leads to a very nice combination. Now white is already, according to the engine, losing the game. That's why the tracks the counter attack is so is so uh, venomous. Uh, we have knight d4 check, and now king d3. A little bit better of a defense would be now to take the bishop, and after you take the bishop, you allow something like knight e4 check. The rook comes into the game, the queen comes into the game. You have got compensation for black, and black is even winning here in this position. Maybe with perfect play, an engine could hold this, but very unlikely. Rheinisch in this position again did not want to take the bishop and he played king d3 and already from a human perspective you're already wondering what's the king doing on d3. You have sacrificed a piece here that was not accepted so you're not actually down material with black in this position which is very interesting. Um, now you could either save the queen or what Traxler played in the game very aggressive b5 immediately attacking the bishop and now you're kind of wondering the bishop now retreated you could also think of taking the queen in this position because it's a free queen let's take a look at what happens if you take the free queen then bishop takes c4 check king takes c4 we have bishop a6 check developing the bishop king b4 we have rook b8 check developing the rook you already see black has very many pieces developed a very nice harmony between the pieces and white's pieces still on the back row with this stranded knight here the king is very nastily placed here we have king a5 and now bishop e2 the white queen is also trapped let's say queen takes e2 then you can take the queen the knight is still stranded for instance after d3 king takes d8 bring the rook into the game but bishop b6 check Saving the bishop, king a4, now you trade the bishop, knight takes c1, rook takes c1, and you see you're now up a bishop for a pawn, and white's king is just terribly placed. You're gonna win this game very easily. The engine gives minus eight, so this is basically resignable at this point. There's no reason to play this on a higher level. So, this is the reason that in this position the queen was not accepted. 
but rather the bishop was saved, which is an interesting move, but it's not much better actually, because now knight takes e4. Um, very interesting, because Trexler sacrifices another piece, because you see this knight can just be captured. So knight takes queen was played. Let's take a look at what happens if white in this position. By the way, it's already lost. The engine says minus 30. So no matter what you do, it's actually lost. There are some weird checks that kind of hold the game a little bit longer, but nothing very serious. I want to show you quickly what happens if you accept the knight with king takes knight. Then d5 check, and there are three moves that you can play with white here, and all of them lead to a very quick checkmate. Let's take a look at all the three moves for white. All of them lead to a very quick checkmate. First of all, we can take the pawn with the bishop. Bishop takes d5. Then bishop f5 check, king takes e5, we have queen f6 check, king f4. And now you see that queen and the king are aligned, so there is a very nasty discovered check. Taking on c2 with the bishop, king g4, and now you have queen h4 checkmate. You also have queen f5 checkmate, depending on what you like better. So we see taking the, with the bishop is not possible. Let's go and move back. Maybe king takes on e5 would be possible. This leads to a very quick checkmate after queen e7 check, king takes d5, and now you can either checkmate with the bishop, bishop b7 checkmate, or you can even checkmate with the c-pawn, c6 checkmate, depending on what you like better. So we see king takes e5 is not very much better. After d5 check, we have one last alternative, just going back with the king, king d3, but it's also a mate in five, bishop f5 check, bringing another piece into the attack. Queen, uh, king c3, we have knight e2 check, white has to sacrifice the queen, bishop d4 check, king b4, a real king hunt at this point, with a5 check, another pawn check, king a3, and bishop c5 check, mate. I think this is a very, ni very nice checkmate here, very aesthetically pleasing with all the pieces on the, four, on the fifth rank, very nice harmony and this very nicely placed king. If you take a look at the material count, you only have a pawn for two knights with black, but it's not, doesn't matter because you're being checkmated. So, as I said, knight d6 would have been the best defense in this position, but it's not much, much better. Taking the knight, as we saw, is not, not, not possible with white. You're losing the game immediately. Reinish in the game took the queen, which leads to a very nice forced checkmate in nine moves. If you want to, you can calculate that in your own head while pausing the video, because I'm going to show you to you very quickly. All forced checks, by the way, it's a very forced variation, so it would be possible to calculate this, but it's still nine moves. It's a lot. With knight c5 check, first of all, king c3. With knight e2 check, Queen takes e2, we have bishop d4 check, king b4, we have a5 check, king takes b5. It's, as you see, it's very forced, and the white king is drawn even closer into the enemy camp with every move. Bishop a6 check, king takes a2, and you're going to win so much material, the material count is plus 13, a queen, a knight, and a pawn for basically nothing, but still... Black is checkmating white here in a couple moves. Bishop d3 check, king b4, all very much forced. Knight a6 check, king a4, knight b4 check, and even this knight can now be captured, but c5 checkmate. Very nice attacking game straight out of the opening with a material count of plus, th plus 16. White is being checkmated in this position, and this is all pretty much theory to this point, because this game is historically very important. And I hope at some point you're going to also try the Trexler counter-attack, starting with bishop c5 here in the fourth move against the Italian game. A very spicy opening, and very well suited for attacking players. If you feel like you want to have a slow tactical game, a slow theoretical game, um, this might not be your opening, but if you want some tactics, I can definitely recommend that. We're going to take a look at some more Trexler games in the future. If you want me to analyze one of your own games, you can send them in. Also, if you want to take a look at 
some very nice games from Grandmasters. You can also send that in if you like one of the Grandmasters and I should analyze a game of them. Check out my Twitch if you want to see live chess gameplay. Check out my Instagram as well. I hope to see you back on the channel soon. Bye.